Hi there, this is Art and Such, and today we're going to do a Rainbow Loom video of the goose from Shrek. This is Rumpelstiltskin's pet goose. Uh, I am going to make a couple of changes from what you see here. So we are going to shorten the neck, broaden the body, and move the legs a little more central. Uh, otherwise, this is more or less what we're looking at. You'll want a couple of red beads or bounds for the eyes, some orange, some white, and a little bit of pink. You are going to want a hook or holding hook. I'm going to be doing part of this on the loom in the standard offset configuration. And I will also be doing parts of this um, with the second loom. And you can use the same one, but with the middle pieces out. And we're going to work around similar to the strategy, the technique used with the monster loom. Uh, last thing I just want to tell you before we start, my, my baby is sleeping, so I'm going to do my best to get this in one or, two sh one or two takes, but if you see an abrupt change in the video, it's because I've had to, had to slip out, but I will return. So first order of business, we're going to make the little legs. Okay, zoom this out here. And you're going to want orange for that. I'm going to use a lighter orange. We'll come to the loom and I'm going to start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bands up from the bottom. Twist, double it over, and place it down in the middle. We'll do that three more times. Now if you're counting top down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's also seven. So that's an easy one to count. And we'll lay down four of these, doubled over each time. And then we're gonna do one to the side. This will be the third peg from the bottom. Repeat that in the opposite direction. Twice down in the middle, all doubled over singles. And twice down on either side. Take a single and double it over. Bring it across your bottom two pegs. And you're going to lift that up over the bottom center peg. The last thing is a doubled over single holding band. And that will go across the second pegs up from the bottom and form a triangle there. Okay, we'll start on the side. Put your hook with the open part facing up. Bring it under or through that holding band. And you're gonna grab the bottom doubled over single, which is coming from the peg atop, uh, above. And what you wanna see is something a little bit like this. Reach inside and push back that triangle band and bring your next one up and over. And then you can bring that into the middle. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then go to the bottom center and loop up the bottom middle. One, two, push back all the bands and go for the doubled over single in the bottom, the one that is coming from the peg above. Loop up. We'll do that until we have reached place where we started. So continue looping and hold on to that top one while you release the other pieces from the pegs below. Do it carefully, there is a lot of tension here. And then you can put your hook through the bands on that top center, 
and pull it off and you can leave this where it is or put it onto a separate holding hook if you'd like. I'm going to do another one the same way. I'll go a little bit faster but if you need to pause or four, five, six, seven, or go back and see it again by all means. So we'll do four doubled over singles coming down the middle starting at the well the middle most center of uh, the middle most center row peg here and then it's the seventh one down or up one to either side coming down diagonally and two on each row coming down I'll hold it up to show you again one more time once I've got these laid down Doubled over single across the bottom and stretch it over that bottom center. And one more across the second one from the bottom. Okay, loop up the sides, reach under your holding or securing bands, and your triangle band, bring them up and then into the middle. And again on the other side. And do the middle again. And then in the bottom we want to loop up right until we reach that seventh peg where that we started from. We'll only get the bottom doubled over band on each of these. When you're ready, you can Start releasing the, the secured ones and remove this from the loom. Put it back on your peg, on your, sorry, on your hook. Ah, okay. And there we go. Okay, and Okay, the nose is the next thing we'll do. So I'm gonna to come to the bottom of the loom, or the beak, and doubled over single, count four pegs from the top, and come down to the third peg from, uh, from the bottom. We'll do that once on either side. And then in the middle, the third peg from the top to the, keep saying that the third peg from the bottom to the second peg from the bottom doubled over single and another one to the bottom most in the center row gonna need a bigger stretch on the next one doubled over single and bring it down from the third from the bottom on the side to the bottom most in the middle so it's gonna stretch down diagonally and you want to repeat that on the other side We'll put a triangle band, doubled over single, across your second from the bottom in the middle and the third from the bottom on the side. And then a, uh, a band at the bottom center. Put it on top and we want to loop it one, two, three, four times. You can try for five if you want it to be extra tight. I'm going to reach under that securing band and get the top doubled over and bring it back to the side closest to me here. This is the one that I'm seeing above all the others. Shoot. And it's not. Hold on. We're going to try that again. So under that holding band, bring it around and over. So let's come up diagonally. We'll go back for the next two. Carefully bring those around and up. I know it's very tight here. This part will be done soon. 
and back under for the last two or doubled over single push back get your bottom doubled over on either side that doubled over bend and carefully remove it from the looms starting by releasing the bottom ones and then hook through hook through the middle and hook through the side we're going to put this onto a white single for now slide it over and there now i'm actually going to put this on the other side of the feet so it's easier to access uh, next up let's make the wings we are going to be using quite a few bands on this part so prepare yourself uh, for this one let me do a count here we're going to start one two three four five six ten three, so the fourth peg down on the side take two bands that's right. One, two, three. And check that one more time. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. Okay, so it is the third. Third peg down to the fourth peg down on each of the rows. Sorry, on either side. And the middle we're gonna start one lower. So from the fourth to the fifth, that's what we Pod. and in the middle row with double bounds so two at a time you can continue down until you reach the bottom of the loom On the left side, you're going to come down until, well, actually on either side, until you reach the third one from the bottom. So that'll be three, four, five, six, seven, and eight sets coming down. And then stop there. Repeat on the other side. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with the beak, which is to take our bands to this time and bring them from the third from the bottom on the side to the the very bottom most one in the middle. Same on the other side. We're going to do a single uh, band and loop it over the bottom middle two, three, four times. We'll put on our triangle bands, just single bands. You don't have to double them over. And we'll use those to form triangles upside down triangles starting above the bottom center and I'm also going to give you um, the option of making an extension which will create a broader wing. So that'll look a little bit like this. Otherwise it will just be a bit more narrow and this part's actually not too hard to do. It's just going to take more bands. So if you are trying to really preserve your weights, then you might skip that step. And otherwise, uh, just stay with me here. So for the side extension, we take a single weight, wrap it twice on the end of the hook, and we'll take eight sets of double bands and make a chain. So pull it on, replace. That's one, two. Three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. You can adjust any of us if you want to have a longer or shorter wing or thinner or thicker wing. So a really thick one would have one of these on either side. I'm going to only put it on one side. The bands on my hawk will be transferred to the third peg down on the side and go on top of the bands that I've already placed there. And then we want to find the three little loops at the very bottom and put your hook through. I'm only getting two there should be one more and bring that onto the third peg from the bottom where you finished placing your other bands and to connect this on get your hook into each side of the chain and pull a piece out and put it onto the pegs in between and that'll just keep it from hanging loose like this when it's on you want it to be nice and tight and snug so I put my hook in, I separate out one little piece and I bring it over and we'll do that right to the top and then we'll be ready to loop this up and start the next wing. Alright, so if you go back to the bottom, you want to reach under that top band, find the top or the next whites and bring them up to the side. Go back in for the next two, bring those up to the side, and then you can come all the way up the middle, so looping two at a time. Push back your holding bands, make sure you get both of your, uh, both of the bands that you had laid on. that fourth peg from the top on the middle. The far side that doesn't have the extension can be looped straight up starting with that third peg from the bottom. So take your bottom two and bring them forward. Continue that to the top or to where you started uh, placing your bands. One more. And then on the side that has the extension, we're going to do the same thing, but you want to make sure that you're only grabbing the bottom layer of two at a time here. So you'll see two sitting underneath on each one, and you can even pull those out, push back all the rest and get your hook inside, scoop it and bring it forward, and you'll repeat that until you've reached the top. So just watch out again for those holding bands. Those are the triangles we placed across the middle. I'm going to put my hook through the ones, and you can loosen some of this up first if you'd like. We're going to put the hook down to the top right, then down through those top middle, and then down through the last ones. Remove. This one shouldn't be as tight as the other because none of these were doubled over, but you certainly can remove it with the hook first. Stretch it out a little bit. And this is going to go onto a single white. Although if you want to save that part for later, you can. And replace. Now as I say, if you want it to be thinner, you would do the same thing but without the side extension. Um, and you can play around with the, the length and whatnot. We're going to do the second one. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time, but we're doing the same thing. So starting at the third peg down on either side, the fourth peg down in the middle, double knot, or sorry, double bounds, and we'll go, I feel like I said eight times. Uh, at any rate, you want to stop on the sides when you get to the third peg from the bottom, and the middle row is going to continue right until the very last peg.
believe this is the last part we're going to do with the loom in this configuration before we move on to the, the monster tail style, which is with the big gap in the middle. So if you're already there, you can get your loom set up for that while I'm, uh, while I'm putting on my securing band. And uh, getting on to the next part here. And again, if you, and as always, if you need more time with this, press pause, go back, uh, take your time. And there's no hurry for you. All right, and I'm just keeping these all on the same hook. You can separate them out if you need. My side chain again is a chain with eight sets of double bands. This is two. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. We'll place them. I'm going to place it again on the right side, third peg down, and it will. And on the third peg from the bottom, connect it to the pegs in between. Up, starting with that bottom middle. First two go to the side. So we'll reach under that top one and get your first set, bring it to one side, second set to the other side, and loop right up the middle, watching up for your triangle holding bands. If you decide to do these in um, a different order and start on one of the sides, that's totally fine. It will work out the same here as long as you make sure to get all the pieces incorporated. Sometimes I even, um, I'll even do a couple loops up on one row and then the, the next and then the next and move almost side to side. You just want to make sure again that you are getting all the pieces because it's really crummy if you this one and everything comes undone. You don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm looping up the side here. We're almost done with our wings. And pretty much the rest of this is going to be done uh, together. I'm going to be doing some adjustments as I go along, as I say, to account for a shorter neck and a wider body and different foot placement. So bear with me if I pause now and again to do a little calculation, but I think I know where we're, where we're going here. Okay, I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit before I pop it out. And hook comes down through the top, through the middle. Make sure you're getting all of them and then to the side. Okay, and you want these to look relatively even, so that's just fine. Slide it onto a single white. I suppose you could use two if you wanted it to be extra safe, but the one should do it. I'm going to put this loom to the side and let's get out the next one. So I do find on occasion these pop apart. Um, the way I have it positioned at the moment is that the, a couple of backings spread out and I've got four open 
pegs between on either side. You can experiment with your loom and see what, what works best for you. And hopefully all will go well here. Sometimes it does pop out a little bit, so just be prepared for that possibility. I'm gonna take out two red beads here actually and get our eyes ready to go. And I'm using I'm using beads. If you want to use bands, you can wrap them onto a hook. Three wraps should probably do it, and then slide it onto your band. Um, I have dental floss, there it is. So I like to use dental floss to thread on smaller beads. Uh, you could also use a wire or a needle and thread. This is just the method that, that I've been using for a while and seems to be pretty effective. We're gonna want two single white bands. I'm gonna take one white band. Actually, we'll start by putting one of the beads onto the dental floss. I'm using red beads. They aren't as big as pony beads, but they are larger than seed beads. You could also alternatively use a wrapped up red band. Take a single white, double it over. I'm gonna put the dental floss through the band. And then back through the bead. So, let's try and get you a good picture here. Through the bead, through the band, around and back up through the bead. It sometimes goes very smoothly and is very easy and sometimes not so much. But give me a second while we'll I get it there. Okay. And then we'll stretch that band out and slide the bead on. And if it really isn't working, you might need stronger dental floss or a different or a bead with a different size of hole. I'm gonna try this again here. I know I got this on earlier, so I think my gloss is getting worn out though. Might have to get a new piece soon. I'm also rushing a little bit, you can tell, and that sometimes leads to less effective practices. Try this again very carefully. Now another thing, if it's really not working, you could use just a single white band, which might be what I have to do here. Or I could try a different bead. That's another another idea. There we go, it did work. Okay, try and do this without breaking my band. You wanna slide it on and put your hook through on one side and then through the other. Yay, got one. And it isn't fully centered there, and that's okay. Okay, second one, wish me luck. My floss through the bead, double over my single, put the floss through the band, under the band, and back through the bead. And it's true, sometimes one one bead doesn't work and sometimes you have to try a couple of times and again it's alright. You figure out what what works best for you. I'm gonna stretch it and carefully slide it, slide it, slide it. Until we're on. That one went more smoothly. And then transfer it onto the hook. Okay. All right. Let's go over to the loom here. We're going to start with a single, double it over, twist it, and we're going to come across the, uh, well, really any, any two pegs. We'll do that again across the next two below. And 
again coming down between those pegs. So you're gonna be making a box or a square. And one more time, double it over and twist it. And I know there's a lot of tension here. They, the rules are not all gonna be like that. Okay, the next thing we'll do is take single bands and put them on top. One, two, three, and four. From here, and this is, um, might be familiar with this, if not, just bear with me. You'll see on each of the pegs, you're gonna have one set, two sets, three sets, and four sets of double bands together. There should be two sitting higher up and two below. You wanna take the bottom ones. These are the ones that have the twisted bands and you're gonna scoop those up and over and on top. So that's the bottom two sets. And the same for the next one. So there are one, two, three, four sets of two. And you're gonna take the bottom four loops or the bottom two sets here. So over, over. And we'll do that again on the other side. And you'll know you've got the wrong ones if something pops, like comes up and loose. And if so, you'll back, you'll want to backtrack and do that again. I'm going to push these down. That's going to be the top of the head, and that's why we want it so tight because we want it to kind of snug up together at the top. Okay, for our third row, we're going to put the eyes on. So take a single, bring it across the top, a single across the bottom, and on either side, you're gonna stretch the ones with the eyes. So let me place that on and then I'll show you what it looks like. You're going to go to the bottom and you're going to take the set of bottom two bands and bring it up and over and there should be three loops remaining. The one above that you're going to take the bottom three and you'll see two loops remaining. Actually, hold on, we should only have two, two on each of those. And the other side, same thing. And last one, same thing. The bottom three, oh, sorry, bottom three will come over. Uh, no, that one's attached there, hold on. E, trying to get the right one. There. Okay, and you want to see something like that. Okay. The next row is going to be four singles, so push it down a little bit and just go across and across and up to down and up to down. If you want to go around the circle and lay them down across, down, across, up, that's fine too, as long as you get all of those covered and bring the bottom two loops over. So lift them up to the side and bring them up and over. And same thing on the other side. And get your nose piece at the ready. That's the next one for us to lay down. So one single across the top and one single down on either side. And for that bottom piece, we'll be needing the nose. the bottom two loops, bring them up and over, push this down as you're going, keep an eye on your loom that everything's staying nice and tight, 
and over and your bottom two over. Now from here, I believe I originally did another eight sets of just singles, but we're gonna make this a little bit shorter. We're gonna do four. So this is uh, with about eight more sets, but I wanted a little bit shorter. So we're gonna do, uh, hold on, that's five. We're gonna do four more sets of across. So here's one. It's a good idea to maybe write down the row you're on to do a use a counter. Just it's a little harder to track on this with this kind of approach I find. This is going to take us to our ninth row uh, of the pattern. Originally I had 13 for the long part of my neck as I said, so I'll show you what that looks like one more time and then you can decide if you're happy with this length for yours. I'm just going to push this down a little as I go. You can kind of turn it around and look at it as you go and see how it's coming along. So this was my original head neck piece and it's a little bit long. Um, with the four rows out it should be about this long. So we're gonna lose maybe this much. If you want to keep going you can keep going and when you're ready to move on we're going to expand it out. So this part I want to do a little bit differently. Um, we're gonna make it broader because you can see my body's not very wide, so we're gonna make this a little wider this time. I'm gonna start by laying one across, one down, one down, and then I'm gonna do a doubled over single twist across like so. So, and again, for the one above, uh, like connecting it all the way around here. And the reason I'm doing, doing it this way is so that it's going to be nice and tight. We shouldn't have a giant gap where we've extended it. And I'm going to do a single on top of each of the ones that we just added. So just for my own sense here, that's going to be our 10th row then. And let's go the top one. We're going to take the bottom two loops over and leave two on there. And the same on the other side. The bottom side, we want to take the bottom two loops. You should have four left. I guess we could take another two up. I think that will work and take the bottom on the bottom two over on the far side and then the next two loops over and that remain that leaves us the side middle and I'm going to take two over there and it's like one more I'll take three push it down a little and that's as far as I expanded it at this point on my first time around, but I want to make it a little broader. So again, I'm going to do one across the top, 
Now if you're um, one down on either side, if this is looking really crazy what I'm doing and you have a different way that you're more comfortable with, double over single twist, um, you, you can play around with this and see if something works a little easier for you. One straight down, single, and then I'm going to do a doubled over single twisted across the bottom here. And I'll put on a single over the ones that I just put the double, the double one on. Okay, the top one, take the bottom two loops and bring them over, the same on the other side. The middle on the side closest to me, I'm going to take the bottom two loops. The opposite side, I'm going to take the bottom three loops and bring them over. Really the important thing is you want to find when you're taking the loops off and over that you don't see something like uh, that you don't see something like this happening. If you see that, then you've taken off one of the pieces that isn't really secured and in place yet. So you want to make sure you're taking from the bottom. If you only take two from the bottom and then get the next, the next one on the next time around, that's okay. That isn't going to ruin it. It's more important to make sure everything is secured in. So even if you leave a couple of extra, it's okay. You can grab it the next time. Um, as long as you can kind of keep track and they aren't piling up to, too, to being too many. I'm going to push that down a little. So that's, I believe, the 11th row. And... Okay. Let's do one row of just singles. We'll form a box around on top of the ones we've done even it out a little more and then I think we're going to do this one more time uh, another expansion up the top here so we'll be repeating what we just did if you're feeling like it's too crazy and you want to just stay here where we are you can continue working up from these six pegs I'm taking the bottom ones I'm making sure to leave two loops or bands at the top on each of these here and I'm watching uh, that they're staying somewhat in order and nothing is coming all the way off the loom. Press this down a little bit, turn it around, you can see we've got our goose forming. Okay, so I'm going to expand it again over the next two rows. I feel like I'm losing count, but I believe this is going to be 12. So let's do singles to start over the ones that we have already. And then I'm going to go up with the doubled over single twisted diagonally. And I'll show you this in a second. If, and if you feel like you want to consolidate and broaden it across the two at one time, you can definitely try that. Put a single over on each of those. And let's pull the bands over. So bottom ones over. And I'll start up here. A little bit of a funny angle but I'm trying to do this so that so that I'm staying on camera and all that I'm gonna do the other side I like to do the easy ones first uh, did I say this is about our 12th row I think and we're gonna go a little bit further and then we'll be adding the wings on soon. So I'm making sure to leave the top bands, but you can take pretty much everything under that's underneath as long as you don't see anything popping up. 
And I'm going to expand it out one more time and that'll be the last expansion. So singles over the ones that are in place already. And then doubled over single, twisted. And repeat. Cross those remaining ones, finish up that rectangle. And singles over these new ones. I'm gonna go around again. Okay, see, so I think if my count is right, we're on 13th row now. I'm gonna do the other side and then come back for that bottom one. I'll tell you, this is this strategy technique was something I really struggled with when I started playing around with them. Um, and I still find it's a little tricky to keep the count sometimes and to make sure I'm getting all the right pieces and the expansions and tightenings in the right places, but something you, you just can keep working at and practice and it does get easier, but you definitely want to take your time with this. So that was, did we say the 12th row, I think? Uh, the next one, actually let's do three of them just with singles coming all the way around. So these ones should be easier. Hopefully you're still with me and doing okay out there. Bottom two loops and this, I see this one has more than two so I didn't get them all up the last time. That's okay as I say as long as, ah, do you see what happened there? So that wouldn't be right. That one I have to make sure to put back on the peg above. It popped off, jumped off. Uh, but on this row, I know that they all definitely have two bands at the top, so everything else I should be able to bring over. I'll continue around like so. Okay, push this down a little bit. It's getting harder because I'm doing this on a flat surface, so there's nowhere for the Poor duck, poor goose to go. Um, I think I'm gonna actually add on the wings now. So I wanna say we're on the 13th row, thereabouts. And I'm gonna put one of my wings on. Hmm. Okay. Um, so there are two or three ways you could do this. The way I originally did it is I just put it across the two middle side ones and laid it on those center pegs then it will get a little bit in your way and you will probably eventually want to push it through I'm gonna try something different this time and I'm actually going to put that single band on my fingers reach through bring one side up through and over and the other side up through and over. And I know this looks awkward and you can, oops, can certainly put them, uh, you can certainly put it on on top and try and push it underneath later. I'm putting it through, like I say, from underneath. So I put it underneath and pulled it through and that way it isn't gonna lump up on the side. Okay, so next one. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm putting my hook between the loom and the bands that are on. And I'm gonna grab this wing. I'm actually gonna take one side at a time just to, so I feel more secure about it. And I'm putting them on those center pegs. So onto here, I'll grab the other side. And that way, like I say, we won't have the wings in the way. This does look hard and this might not be working for you, in which case you certainly can put it on on the top. Okay, and this came off from somewhere, but I don't know where. All right, um, I'm gonna 
put a single across all of these. We're gonna do a whole time around. So we're at roughly the 14th row. If you wanna save bands, you don't have to put it onto the one that we just put the wings on. And those two middle sets do have new bands on top, but this is probably a good idea to do. So I'm gonna do a whole time around here. And loop that in. Just check our time and our battery and we're doing okay so far. My baby's so sleepy and I'm really happy about that. Okay. He could use a nap. He is nine months old now, my baby. And finally having some good naps. Which leaves me a little more time for things like Rainbow Loom and eating. Okay, so I'll show you from the top. This is what we have so far. And I think I'm going to incorporate the legs now. Originally I put them on right at the bottom, but as you can see that leaves them hanging at the bottom when we want them coming out closer to that middle point there. Although with that in mind, I think we'll, you know what, I'm going to go a couple more rows. Let's do two more times all the way around. So we're going to call this row 15, which I think is more or less accurate. I'm really excited to be possibly almost done this project because it took about an hour and a half to plot it out and yeah it's kind of a long one but I think it looks kind of kind of neat and this was one that was requested a long time back I've been wanting to get to and I do love the Shrek series so if you're you're interested I'll put this on the playlist and can certainly check out some of the other Shrek tutorials. I've got quite a few up there. Uh, some of them are much older, so uh, apologies if the quality isn't up to snuff. Um, but I do know I've got Shrek and Fiona and Dragon, and I believe I've got Rumpled Stiltskin. And you know what? I'm very proud of my Merlin. I've got an awesome Merlin on my channel, so. Have a look if this is up your alley. I've totally lost track of where we are. I believe this is about row 16, maybe 17. Um, if you feel like you're wanting to, again, to change the, adjust the length at any point, you can, can play around with that for sure. I'm gonna get these feet on the front. So let's put a single white onto the end of the hook. Slide the legs onto it, and this will go uh, the same side that has the beak in it. So let me put this on and I'll show you where we're at. You know what, these might as well pop, pop down through. They'll be in the way there too. So here's my beak then that's the side. It's going to line up with the beak. It's not, not terrible if you put it further back. In fact, I wonder, maybe that would be a good idea. Let me just have a fast look at the picture. Character. Mm, you could put it in the middle as well. I, I sort of feel like it should be closer to the front, but it's, it's up to you. Uh, so now that one is accounted for, and I'll come around the rest with single white bands. I'm gonna see this is about row 17 and I think after this one we'll do a little bit of a check and we'll probably want to start bringing this in a little bit. We'll start narrowing it down soon. Okay so go around you can start anywhere as long as you get all of the pegs we're going to bring up everything but the top two and just looping, you want to just be looping those bottom ones over. It's easier to do it from the inside of the peg, but 
turn your loom around, play around um, with the hook and see what strategies work for you. And you might be finding that it's getting thick here, so this is this is where it's helpful if you are able to push some of those pieces through more. So this is what I see uh, see looking through. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to start closing this up. And with that in mind, for the next row, I'm going to take the hmm, back or the front. I think we're going to start at the front. So where the feet are, I'm going to take the bounds off of one of those pegs very carefully and bring them up onto the peg above. So I've just moved it up one peg and I'm going to come around the rest of the way with singles. Again, you can always adjust the size of this if you want to keep going, you can. If you want to try to close this up two at a time, you can. I want to do this gradually. I feel like that will be a satisfactory effect for me. We're going to come in on the side and bring up everything but the top two. For the pegs that uh, where you just just combined, just joined, I'm going to leave the top four, I think, for now. Push those all down a little. Check the top. Looking good. Okay, um, so same thing here. I'm going to go to the one on the bottom left and bring those bands up over. Uh, I'm bringing them like I'm flipping them over, but if you just carry them up and over the same direction, it, it should be okay either way. And we'll come around those six remaining pegs with single white bands. We are very close to being done here. So uh, I'm hoping you're with me and, you, and again, all is going well. And Kudos to you. This is a hard one, so you should be very proud of yourself if um, that things are going smoothly. And you're gonna have a beautiful goose right away. Okay, I'm leaving four on that peg. If you wanna loop more of them up, you can. It's gonna check our how it looks. So far, so good. And let's. Bring the next two up. And come around with singles. Okay, don't ask me what row we're on. I'm not counting anymore. Sorry, I did have it written down, but now that I've made my adjustments and got myself distracted. We could probably figure it out because we left off around 16, 17, and then I think we've done about three or four more, but no matter. Okay, I'm going to bring the next one up and over and onto the peg above. Uh oh, last one. Hold on. I can see one of these flopped out here. I'm going to try to bring it back through those bands. So now I've got it onto four, and we'll do uh, singles the rest of the way around, or the whole way around, I suppose. I'm going to have a good look here in just a minute and see if we want to close this up a little more rapidly for the last part. We might do kind of two moves in one, just so that this doesn't get drawn out for too too long this narrowing process but let's have a look hmm. yeah i think i'm ready to start closing that in so let's take the bottom ones and put them on the top ones so i'm moving from where the legs are further and then further up bringing both of those sets upwards and now i'm just going to take the bottom ones and bring them up and over. And we'll take 
the hook through one side. I'm coming up through and then down through and slide them out. Oh, I'm very pleased with this. I'm going to take two bands, slide it through, put the other end back on and one side can go over the other. You can do a knot and you can put it on a holding hook if you like too. Oh, sorry, not a holding hook, a C-clip. I think I'm, I don't really like the way this looks loose, but you could do it with three, you could cut it, you could leave it like a bit of a tail. Uh, I think I would prefer to tuck it in though, so I'm going to put my hook under a couple of nearby bands, grab those loose ones and slide them under, and then put that onto a C-clip on the underside. The last thing we need to do is the little pink bow, and we should be all set. Uh, also, if you, okay, um, two other things. If anything is sort of slipped to the wrong place, you can adjust it. So here, these legs, they're sticking together. I don't really like the way that looks. I'm going to come under, I'm going to come under these white ones on the side and pull the orange through. If you can't see exactly what I'm doing, it's okay. The idea is to kind of play around and you can adjust and fidget and fiddle, but... I'm lifting some of the nearby vertical bands so I can pull the the legs out underneath. If you want to keep them totally central, you can. Okay, and then the last part is going to be that last part. Then is going to be oh, one other one other option. If you want your wings to kind of cinch in and stay, you can hold it close. You can use a an extra band if you want. And I'm going to put my hook under a couple of bands in the body and then under one or two from the hook, uh, from the wing and pull it under and that will keep it cinched nice and tight. And we'll do the same on the other side. I'm going to do a shortcut and cheat and go weave it across, but you can put it, just put it on a C-clip and do the same on the other side. That's probably your easier bet. So give me one second. I'm gonna tidy this up here. So again, if you want the wing to sit closer, you go under a band on the body. I'll hold this up for you better in a minute. So you would go under a band in the body and then grab a band out of the wing there isn't a specific one, you just um, kind of grab it where it's working for you. So I'm doing sort of the middle but towards the top. And then pull the one band under the other and this can go on a C-clip. You, you might be able to use the same C-clip that you have on the bottom. I'm going to try and do that. If, if that's looking hard, then put a new C-clip in. You'll be all set there. Okay, I'm just going to slide that through and pop it on my C-clip. Ta-da! All right, last thing is the pink bow, and there are a couple of strategies. The one I'm going to show you, it's okay. It's kind of straightforward and easy here. I'm going to take a single, stretch it, bring it around my finger, and tie it in a knot. Oops. So this is going to stretch out your band quite a bit. Um, put your hook through just one of those little loops which is hard to do without undoing this but we'll try and we're going to put it onto a single band slide it through replace and that can go over the goose's head if you want to double it over you can for extra you know extra tightness okay so let me Hold the camera up, we'll get you a better picture here. All right, there is Rumpled Stiltskin's Goose out of the Shrek franchise, Shrek series. And I thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. All right, guys, take care.